Thank you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. I'm happy to be in Kumasi here. Your town, our town. And I pray the joy of the Lord will drive away every negative thing out of your life in Jesus' name. Full salvation. Total healing. Everything coming to you today. Father, in Jesus' name. We know that anything we ask in that name is granted tonight. You'll save every soul. You heal every sickness. You will deliver the oppressed. And your gospel, your power will penetrate every life. You will do the impossible in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Before you sit down, turn to the person beside you there. Say, God bless you tonight. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we come to receive. God has everything you need. And he wants to give you. And you need to receive. How do we receive? Through the gospel. The gospel. That's what we are talking about tonight. Receiving the benefits of the gospel in Christ. Receiving the benefits of the gospel of Christ. Until to look at Mark chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. What he did when he was on earth was the beginning. He opened the eyes of the blind. The beginning of the gospel of Christ, the Son of God. Look at the man they draw from the roof. And he said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Which one is easier to say that sins be forgiven thee or rise up and walk? And he told the man, rise up and walk. And the fellow took his bed and he walked and went back home and he said, we never saw anything like this. At the beginning of the gospel of Christ. The man comes. He's now in the synagogue. One hand is withered. He cannot lift it up. He cannot use it to do anything. And he said, stand up in the midst of the people. And he said, that withered hand, stretch it out. The beginning of the gospel of Christ. This woman had a show of blood. And it's been there for 12 years. And if I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And it she touched. And immediately the flowing blood stopped. It had been there for 12 years. It stopped. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
Uh, look at the man that was totally insane. And as he was insane, he was cutting himself, totally mad, hurting himself. And then he saw Jesus and he bent down. And then the evil spirit cried out, What have I to do with thee? How many of you are there? Demons, more than 2,000 demons, legions. And he said, Go with one word. That man was totally delivered. It's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. A gentle woman came from afar. A daughter was being uh, tormented by the devil. And came and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus kept quiet at first. He wanted to know whether it's quietness or drive away. The woman said, okay, she's not answering me. I'm going. The woman stayed there. At said, woman, it's not trying to give the children's bed to dogs. The woman said, yes, Lord, I know. I'm a gentle dog. But let the crumbs that fall from the table of the children be given to me and my daughter will be delivered. And Jesus said, great is your faith. Go thy way. Your daughter is delivered. She got back home. Everything was all right. Everything will be all right in your life tonight. That was the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here comes a blind man. And he could not see anything. But he heard that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was passing by. And he began to shout, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He shouted him down. He shouting too much. Keep quiet. If you are not saved from the world, from the idea of the world, from the pressure of the world, and from their tyrant attitude and shut up shut up if you shut up you won't get anything he shouted much more son of david have mercy on me and jesus said call him and the man threw away his garment, his badge of blindness. What do you want? That I might receive my sight. Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the gospel that saves. It's the gospel that heals. It's the gospel that delivers. It's the gospel that works signs and wonders in your life. And then, chapter 16 of this mark. At the beginning, gospel. At the end, look at chapter 16, verse 15. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye. That's why I've come here. That's why you have come. I'm going to link you with the gospel of power tonight. You'll be saved. You'll be healed. You'll be delivered. At the beginning, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We take that same gospel 
that Christ himself was declared. And he said unto them, and he said unto us, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And when you hear the gospel tonight, you will receive multiple miracles. When? Tonight. When are you going to be saved? Tonight. When are you going to be healed? Tonight. By the gospel of Christ. As we come to the message today, what I want to do is to spell, I know you understand, I know you can spell it yourself, but I'm going to give a helping hand. I'm going to spell the word gospel. And it is the spelling and the exposition and the explanation and the application of the gospel that will give you benefits tonight. The Lord himself will do the great, the incredible, and the impossible in your life tonight by the power of the gospel. Very quickly, let's begin. That gospel, the G there, is the gospel of grace. The gospel of grace. As we look at uh, Ephesians chapter 2, I'm reading here from verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Grace is gift. It is the gift of God. It is not of yourself. Grace, the gift of God, by that grace you are saved. Remember, it is the grace of God. It is the gift of God. For by grace are ye saved. Not by personal effort. Not by rolling on the ground. Not by punishing yourself. If I say that again, I will slap my cheek. That doesn't save you. If I do that again, I will walk on pebbles. Well, you suffer for nothing because that walking on pebbles will not save you. I will suffer for my sin. The suffering you go through by yourself will not save you. There is Christ who died on the cross. There is Christ who saves us by his sacrifice and suffering on the cross of Calvary. And that grace is here for you tonight. I said that grace is here for you tonight. Saved by the grace of God. You're not saved by keeping the law of Moses. You are not saved by keeping the tradition of the elders. You are not saved by following the tradition of a church denomination. You are not saved by dressing like I joined a new church now. I come to a new church now and I see the way they dress. And I, a tailor cannot save you. A good tailor fabricating your clothes and uh, sewing your clothes is your salvation from that tailor. No, the salvation comes from Christ and it is by the grace of God you are saved. Yes, 
G, the grace of God, the gospel of grace. That, that's where the salvation is coming from. That's where the healing is coming from. From the grace of God. Now, to whom is that coming? It's coming from God. It's coming to who? Number one is coming to the guilty. It's not, it's not just God, many help. You're guilty, you're condemned, and you know you are a sinner. You cannot save yourself. Praise the Lord, the grace comes to you today. Who is the grace coming to? The grace of God is coming to the graceless. This word doesn't have grace. His lifestyle is graceless. His interaction with people is graceless. Okay, do I pack my load and come and come go home since I am graceless? No, that's the gospel we're talking about. The grace of God comes to the graceless. Who does the grace of God come to? The grace of God comes to the godless. He's ungodly in his action. He's a thief. He's unrighteous. It's a kind of a, a person you cannot deal with him because it's going to use the longer arm. It's going to cheat you anyhow, anyway. Okay, I'm graceless. I'm, I'm gone. No, the grace of God comes to the godless. As you are there tonight, the grace of God has traveled from heaven, has come here, it will reach your destination today. Oh, the grace of God coming to you. The grace of God is coming to the Gentiles. We didn't know righteousness. We didn't have the right religion. Even when Christianity was brought, we added our own tradition. We well, were just Gentiles. And you have been growing up in life as a Gentile. And now the grace of God that brings salvation has now appeared unto you. Tonight you will be saved. Give me a good, good day. Amen. Amen. The gospel starts with G. The gospel of grace. The next letter is O. What's that? The gospel of his offering. The gospel of his offering. Hey, look at Hebrews chapter 9. And I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. It says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the everlasting spirit offered himself? Christ offered himself without spot to God to purge your conscience from dead works and to serve the living God. You see, it is his offering that brings you salvation. By his stripes were healed. It is his offering that brings you total redemption, salvation, and healing. And so, if you are going to have salvation today, 
And I know you are going to have salvation today. You didn't answer me. I said, you are going to have salvation today. And you are saying, when are they going to take the offering? Because some preachers have deceived us. They say, if you offer big, blessings will come big. If you offer thousands of, not our currency here, thousands of dollars, the more you offer, the bigger the healing that will come to you. But it is not true that our works, our offering, our dollars, our sterling pounds cannot save us and cannot heal us. What offering will save us? What offering will heal us? In the offering of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Didn't you hear? Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Rock of ages, clear for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Not the labor of my hand. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no longer, uh, no, no longer um, hold? He says, Thou and thou alone must say, You come without an offering. Because he offered himself for you on the cross of Calvary. He said, Father, Father, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because of your sin. Because of your evil. And then as he died on the cross, offering you full salvation and total healing he said it is finished all your sins were finished on the cross of calvary what do you what, how do you get the salvation now how do you get the healing now i come because he said come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, I'll give you salvation, I'll give you healing. He tells us in that Hebrews chapter 9, it says in verse 27, it says, It's appointed unto men wants to die and after this the judgment appointed unto men to die from the time of Adam and Eve appointed to die from the time of Cain and Abel appointed to die to the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appointed unto all men to die. Until the time of today. Okay, so did you go for the funeral last week? That's the appointment of all men. It's appointed unto men once to die, and then after this, the judgment. How do you escape the judgment of God? How do you escape that fiery furnace of fire, the lake of fire that will continue forever and ever? It is because of the offering of Christ which he offered for you on the cross of Calvary.
Look at verse 28. In verse 28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Christ the Savior. Christ the Lord. He was once offered on the cross of Calvary so that as you accept that offering, as you believe that offering, as you live in the consciousness of the offering of Christ. That's how you are saved. Now, this gospel of his offering, that's what Christ did. In the gospel of his omnipotence that he has all power on earth to save is the gospel of omnipresence that anywhere anytime you call on the name of Jesus he is present there he will save you tonight Always present as Savior. Always present as healer. Always present as the deliverer. In the gospel of his offering, the gospel of omnipotence, the gospel of omnis omniscience, and the gospel of omnipresence. He's there all the time. He knows your ache. He knows your pain. He knows your problem. And the gospel comes to you to manifest his omnipotence in your life. It's the gospel of your obedience. As you hear the gospel, you accept the gospel, you believe the gospel. And what the gospel tells you to do, it says, repent and believe the gospel. And his omnipotence then comes to save you because you obey the gospel that he has declared unto you. It's there the gospel of salvation. You see, when the gospel comes to us, the gospel wants to accomplish something in your life. It wants to save you. Save you from sin. Save you from satanic affliction. Save you from evil spirit and evil power. It comes to save you from all your sicknesses. Your soul, your spirit, your life, your mind, your body, it comes to save you in entirety. It's there in the gospel, the gospel of salvation. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. We're looking at verse 13. Ephesians 1, verse 13. It says, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation. The gospel provides the way for salvation. The gospel declares the way of salvation. The gospel shows us how we can be saved and so is the gospel of our salvation i need to explain to you the gospel of your salvation number one he saves us from sin actually sins in the plural it's like you have a tree 
everything about that tree we have the root we have the stem we have the branches we have the fruits salvation is like cutting down the tree so that all the branches all the fruits are gone when you confess your sins to the Lord it's like you're mentioning the fruit on that tree when you are for forgiveness and cleansing and salvation it's like you want that tree to be cut down and all the branches and all the fruits are down Lord forgive my stealing forgive my lying forgive my covetousness forgive my violence forgive my crime all those things were mentioning their fruits on the branches of the tree when that tree is cut down the place looks clear it's like we have some breeze a breath of fresh air here the forgiven you have joy and all those trees all the branches and all the fruits are no more there but the fruit is still there and that root you need to dig it up and pluck it out root it out because if that root remains there eventually the rain the saints and everything will come on that stem it will grow again that root you have to uproot that's still part of salvation but it has its own peculiar particular name that one is called sanctification that's why we talk of full salvation the branches are down and the root now is taken away and the sin that produces sins and the plural in your life is uprooted from your heart the root got there from the time of adam that's why the damnic nature there the depraved nature there the root of sin has to be taken away before we can say now I have full salvation and so in the heart is now planted the love of God anger against people that's our protest jealousy for people is doing well i need to stop him so i can catch up with him all that is now uprooted canal comparison <laughs> where is it coming from what kind of life is this and he passed me here and it's going beyond me all that canal comparison is uprooted from your heart the gospel the gospel of grace to the guilty to the graceless to the godless to the gentle the gospel the gospel of his offering the gospel of omnipotence the gospel of omnipresence the gospel of omniscience and the gospel of obedience that grants us the strength the willingness the will to obey the lord the gospel of obedience
and the gospel of salvation. The gospel of salvation. Salvation from sins. Salvation from common sin. Salvation from habitual sin. Salvation from community sin. Everybody is doing it. Salvation from besetting sin. Salvation from the deep root of sin in our lives. The gospel of salvation. And now we come to the next word, the next letter. And here is P, the gospel of peace. The, that's what the gospel is. The gospel of peace. Uh, you know, our world is torn apart. And actually, that strife began after, immediately after the fall of Adam and Eve. Cain and Abel were brothers. And Cain brought his sacrifice, the fruit of his hand. God had cursed the earth. And he brought out of the fruit of the cursed earth unto the Lord for sacrifice. And God said, Cain, didn't you hear from Daddy Adam? That the earth was cursed. And then you are bringing the fruit of the curse unto me for sacrifice. Look at Abel. Abel knew. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And he brought of the lamb. Looking forward to when the lamb of God will come. That will take the sins of the world away. See what he has done. Do that. And make the right sacrifice. In view of the Christ to come. Who will be the final sacrifice. But Cain will not have peace with Abel. And since that time, conflict, conflict, conflict. Some people have the nature of Abel. They, have, they want to have peace. Other people have the nature of Cain. Only conflict. Did he stop there? Jacob and Esau. Conflict. The only way we can have peace is when we allow Christ to come into us. Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau, David and Saul. It went on and on and on. It has come to our time. How much education we have. And education does not take away the conflict in the heart. How much civilization we have. And civilization does not take away the conflict. Only Christ can bring the peace in us. The peace in our family and the peace everywhere. It's, it's the gospel of peace. It tells us in Romans chapter 10. Reading there from verse 15. Romans chapter 10 verse 15. And how shall they preach? Except to be saved. As 
it is written, how beautiful at the feet of them that preach, look at this, the gospel of peace. How beautiful at the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. How ugly, how terrible, how distressing at the feet of them that proclaim their message of hatred and conflict. Somebody tells me I am saved. I said, do you have peace with your wife or with your husband? He says, Pastor, we can't talk about that now. That's another kettle of fish. That woman, nobody can have peace with her. I cannot stay with her in peace. How beautiful at the feet of them that preach, that possess, that declare, that own, that practice, the gospel of peace. When the gospel comes to us, that gospel brings salvation, and that salvation results in peace. The Lord grant you peace in your heart. Grant you peace in your family. Uh, you know how other people recognize we have salvation and we have the gospel of peace we've gone to the meeting and we've given our lives to Christ and Christ comes to live inside us we get back home before we came into that meeting whenever we come back home there's children run here, they run here like a cat has come and all the rats find their way and the old vamos, they all run away. But now after salvation the peace settles in the heart the peace is even shown on our faces and then the children they see us they look at daddy and they feel attracted to daddy and the frown and the conflict and the hatred and the fighting is gone away from the facial appearance of daddy they say daddy 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 something happened to you you're so nice and you're so kind today daddy what happened that's salvation The Lord will confirm that peace in your heart today. You know what the Bible says? Follow peace with all men. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I go to church. That's good. I read the Bible. That's good. I do morning cry. That's good. I give my substance to help the church. That's good. All that will not make you see God if you don't follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The gospel is the gospel of peace. Peace in your heart. Peace in my heart. Peace between you and I. Am I afraid of conflict? 
not at all. I'm afraid of people opposing me and fighting me. And I'm looking for peace, peace, peace. Because I want to feel more comfortable. Not at all. I want to have the peace because it's the evidence of salvation. And I want to see the peace in your life, in your family, and in relationship with me. Not because I'm hungry for that, but because that is the evidence of salvation in the heart of any man. gospel the next word is e is the gospel for everyone is the gospel for you salvation for you redemption for you forgiveness for you eternal life for you tonight it comes to you you will have it in jesus name for everyone, for everybody, in every generation. And look at it in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature every creature the gospel is for you i said the gospel is for you okay i'm not going to talk to you give me the amen you should say god bless you it's the gospel for every creature. It's the gospel for every sinner. It's the gospel for everyone who has gone astray. It's the gospel for every guilty one on the face of the earth. And the gospel has come to you now. As you receive that gospel, that good news, the glad tidings, as you receive that, forgiveness will come to you tonight. Say good amen. Eternal life will come to you tonight. The grace of God will come to you tonight. The offering of Christ will avail for you tonight. The full salvation of Christ will be yours tonight. And peace of heart, peace in your family will come tonight in Jesus' name. All conflict will pass away. The conflict between Esau and Jacob will not remain in your family. The conflict between Saul and and David will not remain in your associates and with the people you interact with. The gospel for everyone. And when you have that gospel, it will show in your life. It will show in your language it will show in your attitude it will show in your lifestyle hell it is the gospel of life the gospel of life the sentence of death is on everyone every sinner on earth the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The wages of sin is death. When you turn away from your sin, and you turn to the Lord, to the Savior, 
and to the giver of everlasting life. That's when the wages of sin, which is death, will be taken away from you. And the Lord will write your name in the book of life. Because you receive the gospel of life. In John chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's coming to you now. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, look at that verse. Look at that verse. This is the gospel. G God. For God so loved the world that he gave. Oh, his only begotten. It's the God of grace. And this is the God that so loved you. And he gave his only begotten. His son. He gave you his son. He sacrificed his son for you. He made his son to be your substitute. And we have no excuse anymore. God so loved me. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish that's a P there that has to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ tonight the son of God that was sacrificed for you that you will not perish I will not perish the gospel is presented to me. I accept. I will not perish. You know, we're looking at the gospel. G for God. O for only. S for son. P for not perish. But have E everlasting. 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 The life of God that goes on and on forever and ever coming to you tonight and then L life 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 is yours forgiveness is yours salvation is yours freedom it's yours. Freedom from sin, freedom from sickness. Life. What's it coming? Life. I said, where will that everlasting life come tonight? You. I said, you. I said, you. I said you and online everywhere that eternal life everlasting life is coming to everyone right now and once you receive the totality of the gospel and once you believe and you accept it is mine the grace of God comes to you the offering of Christ avails for you. The salvation of God comes to you. And then the peace of God will reign in your heart. And you become part of the everyone whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
and the life of God, the life of Christ comes into you. It's happening right now. I said it's happening right now. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. I want the grace of God. I want his suffering to avail for me. I want the salvation of the Lord. And I want the peace of God to settle in my heart. This is for everybody. And I give myself, I surrender myself unto Christ. It is mine. And this life of God, of Christ in man comes to me now. Let's bow the nice clothes. Just raise up your hand. That salvation is coming to you. Amen is coming to you. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Raise up that hand. Don't let this time miss you. Don't miss your chance. If you're raising up your hand to the glory of God, to the honor of Christ, you'll stand up. You love him. You accept him. You want his grace to come to you now. And you're saying, Lord, I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I accept. I believe. And I confess he is my Lord and Savior. Stand up now. And as you stand up, I want you to open your mouth and pray to the Lord. I have heard your gospel. I believe your gospel. I accept the gospel. I believe Christ died for me on the cross of Calvary. He's knocking at the door of your heart. If anyone will open the door, I will come in and fellowship with him. Come in, Lord. Come in now. Come in today. Come in to stay. I want your salvation in me. I'm praying for you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you have invited us and we come leaving all our sins behind. Coming to the Savior that he will be our Savior from this point on in Jesus' name. Lord, as you have promised, all these who are standing and they open the doors of their hearts unto you. Enter in as their Savior in Jesus' name. Lord, give them the evidence of your presence in their heart. God of salvation and God of peace. As your salvation enters into them, let your peace reign in their hearts in Jesus' name. And let the joy of salvation bring the joy both on earth and in heaven before the angels of God. Lord, give them your victory to go and sin all those common sins, habitual sins, and besetting sin and sin no more. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. We believe it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray.
wonderful amen another amen, amen. saved I am saved we call on our pastor to lead us in this session now of counseling You are saved now. So you must give your correct name and your address. All over. The counselors are spread all over. At the stands, let's make sure that we give our correct name. Your name and your correct address. And your phone number. number. If you are watching online and you, you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link. GCKHQ.org slash connect. Display on, on your screen now. Please visit the link and fill out the form so we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. Please also, if you are listening via the radio and television, just you just gave your life to Christ. Please send your name, phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two. Six three. It is also who TV so and I radio so and I would say I'm a semi year near number plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Counselors, let's be fast. If they have not yet reached you, raise your hand and let them identify you. While they are writing their names, those of us that are saved already, Begin to pray. Begin to talk to the Lord. Because tonight, you must experience a spectacular miracle. The gospel power has come to you. Counselors, continue. And let's make sure that we wait for the testimonies. Don't go home now. Be patient with God. At testimonies time, people receive miracles all over the world. People that are hearing me in USA, in Europe, Germany, Germany India, India, China, China for Africa. 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 Any country you are hearing, you are hearing a voice, and you are watching now. Be in expectation. Counselors, let's be fast. Let's make sure that we go to them. Let's make sure we go to them. There will be a special online banquet for all those watching online. Who gave their lives to Christ on Sunday? More details will be given to you later. But we need to understand. We in 
Kumasi greater Kumasi. And the whole Ashanti region. We are the Alpha location. There will be believers' banquet on 4th August. At all deeper life locations. And all our sister churches. We are spread at our sister churches, the churches that join us to do the same in their various churches. Let's give special attention to the converse. The multitudes that are giving themselves to the Lord. They are based in Christ. And we need to disciple them. And so this Sunday, 4th, 4th August is a, spe a special day. In our location, location here, every location, every sister church, so welcome the new converts specially. And that is why we call it Believer's Banquet. So that we will be able to disciple them and prepare them for heaven. Counselors, we are waiting for you. While you are waiting, those of you sitting, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. What do you expect the Lord to do for you tonight? Those of you understand. What are you expecting the Lord to do for you tonight? Those of you watching on, on the net. What are you expecting the Lord to do for you? Those hearing me from USA. Those hearing me from Europe. Those hearing me from any African country. The Lord is about to do something. Something spectacular. Something marvelous. Something you have never seen in your life. It is when you expect. Thank you. We have seen one flag. We have seen the middle here. They are finished. We have seen at the other side. Understand that. Let me see. If you are finished. On the left side, let me see on the wing side. They Have you finished? On, Understand there where the flag. If you are finished, where the flag. And let me see. Yes, I see. But uh, uh, at the back there, uh, understand. Those far away there. Wave the flag well. And let me see. If you are finished, wave it well. No one should escape. Every convert. We need to have their names. And correct address. God bless you. I see another flag there. Let me see. God bless you. The man of God is about to come. Oh, baby, baby. And tonight, 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 you will never remain the same. The Lord is going to work on you. The Lord is going to work on you. The Lord is going to do that miracle for you. Because there's power in the gospel. And the gospel is coming with the fullness of God's power. Tonight, Get ready. Are you ready? If you're ready, so I let me see you standing. Let me see you standing. And the Lord will touch you. If you're uh, you expecting a bigger amen. Everybody, amen. The Lord is going to touch you and heal you now. Because of the gospel. The gospel of God. The gospel of omnipotence. 
the gospel of our sufficiency is the gospel of power and the gospel of emancipation the gospel of life sound healthy upright and that power of the gospel comes to you right now to take your sickness away take your infirmity away drive all those demons away amen, amen. you raise up your hands any challenge you have and then you lay the other hand where the challenge is the power of the gospel will touch you and reach you there and take all those things away from your life are you ready heaven is ready are you ready after the final amen you check that sickness you will not find it anymore father in jesus name mighty god powerful god merciful god compassionate god because of what your son did for us on the cross of calvary that's why we come with confidence we come in faith believing that our healing miracles signs and wonders are present here tonight lord touch everyone heal everyone in jesus name that brain problem in sanity i command you come out in jesus name and that long stand long standing uh, headache vanish come out in jesus name i pray that those blind eyes will open right now blind eyes i command you be open and see clearly now in jesus name all the deaf and dumb lord i pray touch their ears touch their vocal cords i pray dumbness will vanish away and i pray deafness will vanish away in jesus name that goiter be removed in jesus name every form of swelling abnormal swelling in your body i command come out in jesus name and the elephant tears those big big legs and the water head lord i pray touch them that the head become normal that the leg the feet become normal in jesus name long-standing disease ulcer cancer hernia everything asthma be healed in jesus name yeah. any internal problem internal sickness internal pain or pain all over the body the lord is touching you right now be healed in Jesus name Lord I pray that those who have arthritis or their paralysis lameness I pray touch them now heal them now rise up and walk in Jesus name
any psychological problem, Lord, drive them away. Traditional problem, demonic problem, drive them away. Manifest your mighty power on everyone right now, whatever the problem, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. I am healed. I am healed. Say it aloud. I am healed. Performance and confirmation in your life in Jesus' name. It is confirmed.